Welcome to Rock Solid Productions, where in this video we are going to talk about Season 1, Episode 3 of Star Trek Lower Decks, Temporal Edicts. Stay tuned! Hey everyone, Gary here with Rock Solid Productions. Now, before we get into this week's episode breakdown, I just want to take a second and say thank you for stopping by and checking out what we have going on here today, talking about Star Trek Lower Decks. I know, video game channel, don't generally talk about a whole lot else besides modern and retro video games, but I'm also a huge sci-fi fan, so I want to talk about Star Trek Lower Standards at Lower Decks. Um, it's one of those things where I just enjoy talking about this type of thing in addition to the video game stuff. If you like what you see here, we have a whole playlist talking about all the Lower Decks videos and episodes that we've had to this point. I have a link for you to that right up there. And if you really like what you see here, do me a huge favor. Hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button, and that bell notification. And it's more important than ever to do that because YouTube, they're not sending out emails anymore to let you know that there is a new video uploaded from anything from any creator, not just us, so any creator. It's important that you go ahead and do that. And what I want to know before we dive into this episode, ranking the different Star Trek shows that have been done out there from the original series, the animated series, Star Trek The Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, Voyager, Enterprise, Discovery, Picard, and now Lower Decks. What's your favorite? For me, it's gotta be Deep Space Nine. I love Captain Sisko, the best captain that we have had to date even better than Kirk. And Avery Brooks is just a marvelous actor. I love the way that he portrayed Ben Sisko. Um, and the relationship between him and Jake Sirk Lofton, I mean, it was just a great, the two just had such a natural chemistry. I loved the way that they played off of each other. Anytime that we got a Jake and Ben episode it was always really good. But let me know down in the comments, what's your favorite Star Trek series of all time? So we are on episode three of Star Trek Lower Decks, and this is called Temporal Edicts. And it's very clear to this point that you're gonna have like a running gag at the beginning of each episode before you get into the main story itself. Last week, it was the child kind of ripoff from Star Trek TNG, where he had the, the orb that came in and gave Mariner her tricorder. Never saw any follow-up to that after it entered the captain. Where is it? Is it still in the captain? We don't know. Never discussed. In this episode, we get kind of the same thing where they're back in the bar talking in 10 Ford, or their equivalent of 10 Ford. Actually, they're not even talking. Uh, Beamler is in there, and he is playing the violin. It made me kind of think of Data a little bit there. But the first thing that I thought needed to be improved had to do with this intro scene, and it's when Mariner comes in with Tinley and they are playing rock music. And there's complaints about the bass going all over the ship and even into a Klingon ship that is nose to nose with the Cerritos. My problem isn't the fact that they, you know, sound doesn't travel through space, so the Klingons would not have heard it. They may have felt the sound waves, but they wouldn't have heard it. My problem is they're talking about, you know, the excess in bass. What is the meaning of this intense bass? Are you mocking me? She's not playing a bass guitar. That is a six string standard guitar. Um, very few people play six string basses as it is. You know, Les Claypool, one of the greatest basses of all time, plays a six string fretless Carl Thompson. The thing sounds amazing. This is not a bass. Come on, guys, I understand tongue is placed firmly in cheek, but if you're going to be talking about what's going on, it's not a base. Will someone shut that up? You're welcome. After the intro gag, we get a visit to the bridge where we have the captain talking to an admiral as we have the first officer reading his ship's log, and we discover that they were originally supposed to go to Cardassia Prime, but instead they're getting redirected to another mission. And another thing I think needs to be improved, the disrespect shown by the captain to the admiral on screen in front of the rest of her crew, the bridge crew at least, that never should have happened. That never should have been aired out in public. End up endowing them with diplomatic trinkets. We're delivering gifts! Godspeed, Captain. Oh! 
If you're in your ready room, that's fine. You have your heated argument there. But in front of the crew, if you want them to respect your chain of command, you have to demonstrate that you respect the chain of command yourself. It was it was not well played out. I know it's supposed to be for laughs and to create tension and whatnot, but as far as Starfleet and rank and file, it's really something for me, it played very poorly. Nobody respects us because we don't demand their respect. This ship is a joke. Well then, we're the funniest joke in all of Starfleet. Shut up, Jack. Now the underlying plot in this whole episode is something we get known as buffer time. What is buffer time? Buffer time is a callback to relics in Star Trek The Next Generation. Basically, if you remember in Relics, Scotty and Jordy are talking, and Jordy's talking about the fact that he is very busy and he needs to realign the warp core or something. There's something that he has to do. And Scotty asks him, Well, how long is it going to take? Well, he says, Like three or four hours. Scotty gets a glint in his eye and goes, Yeah, but how long is it really going to take? And Jordy's like, It's going to take this amount of time. And, and Scotty does like, you know, a forehead slap. And Charlie, you didn't tell him how long it'll actually take. How can you look like a miracle worker if you're actually giving honest assessments and getting it done within that time? How long would it really take? An hour? Oh, you didn't tell him how long it would really take, did you? Well, of course I did. Well, that's what buffer time basically was, is where you go ahead and you say, hey, this is gonna take me three hours when it only may take an hour. And what it did was build in time for the crew to do other tasks or, well, quite honestly, to slough off a little bit. We see them mixing margaritas and kicking back and relaxing, but it has an overall positive effect on the crew. I like the fact that they went ahead and they did have that throwback to, um, to Scotty and to Relics. It goes back to the premise, you know, long time in retail, you under promise and over deliver. So it's one of those things where it, it had that same effect or the potential of the same effect, but in this episode, they just played it for laughs. They played it and it's one of those things, I understand more and more that this is a satire, it's not serious Trek, but it's one of those things that they turn it around on its, set, on its head so hard for laughs. It's not funny, it's not entertaining, it just, for me, felt really, really dumb. Dendi, how long will it take to repair a bio bed? Oh, uh, that would take about five hours. Excuse me? That's great! And we quickly see after this the chaos that is brought into play on the Cerritos by the elimination of buffer time. And this is something I didn't care for a whole lot. I mean, yes, you are going to ramp up the stress levels, but you're not gonna see people with bags under their eyes after one or two duty shifts because they have to go ahead and actually get things done in a timely manner. Welcome to the real world. There's schedules, there's timing, there's due dates. You have to get things done by a specific set point in time. And if you don't have time to get something done, then either you work longer at it, like working overtime instead of splitting it between two shifts, or you call in help. The, one of the biggest strengths is calling for help when you need it. And I didn't like how it wasn't just the lower decks crew, but the bridge crew, everybody on the ship basically was affected by the elimination of buffer time in no time flat. Even the captain had bags under her eyes Again, it's one of those things that's like, hmm, no. It's a tendy. You were supposed to be in sick bay 20 minutes ago. I'm coming! The next thing that I really, really liked, it reminded me of our good friend Life with Matthew. And if you have not checked out his YouTube channel, I will have a link up there. Check him out. He does a lot of cool stuff. Every Wednesday night, he does a virtual pub uh, where you kind of just hang out and chill and chat. It's a great time. Unfortunately, I can't make it most Wednesday nights, but definitely check out Life with Matthew. So this next thing I really liked is something that as soon as I heard it, I'm like, I could swear that I've heard Matthew say this before. And there was a line in here that says, space, the funnest frontier. Um, I believe it was Boimler who said it. And it just, if this wasn't something that I've heard Life with Matthew say himself, he said something very similar and along these lines. Um, it probably doesn't mean anything to anyone else outside of that group of people, but if you know Life with Matthew, you could definitely hear him and his voice, his inf I mean, it sounded like he was saying it, space, the funnest frontier. Yep, it really sucks. Why is this a good thing? Because sometimes things just resound with you and draw you into an episode 
And when that happens, it's always a praiseworthy thing. In the cargo bay, the crew is getting ready for their away mission. And we have Mariner there and she is with Commander Ransom. And he is busting her for basically being lazy, insubordinate, not caring, having a crappy attitude, a bad work ethic. And he basically says that he's gonna write her up for not rolling down her sleeves or, or, or put her on notice for not rolling down her sleeves. You know what, good for him. Good for him being a strong leader. She is out of uniform when she does wear the uniform like that. There are no short sleeve uniforms. There's no, well, three quarter sleeves like what I have here. If you have to wear that uniform, you need to be presentable in the way, there, there's a dress code essentially that you have to follow. And I did like the fact that they busted her down on this. We wouldn't even be going on a mission if the Admiral hadn't downgraded the captain to delivering gifts. Come on, let's bail. No, and roll down those sleeves. This isn't a barn. Down on the planet, we get another visit from Michael Sue. I mean, Mary Burnham. I mean, Mary Mariner Burnham. I mean, uh, Burnham. Uh, that wasn't even deliberate there when I said Burnham. You get Mariner acting like a Mary Sue when the conflict does start with the aliens. You see her kicking all sorts of ass until she basically is told to fall back by Ransom. Um, it's one of those, she was way over the top and even kind of like her joking, oh, what do we have, Spears here? What is, is, is Kirk around somewhere? Is this the 2260s again? And, and kind of joking around. It, it just, no, she's not funny. I don't think she's a likable character and I don't enjoy when they do this with her. Ah, circled by Spears, this is a classic. What am I, Kirk? Is this the 2260s? All right. Back on the ship, we get our next thing that I really enjoyed, and you have Tendi talking to Rutherford, and she is in the Jeffrey's tube, and she's frazzled and stressed out, which again, I, I, I didn't care for that happening so quickly here. But she asks, you know, I can't, or brings up the fact that she can't even remember what deck sick bay is on anymore, and Rutherford says, I think deck 26, and she asks, is there a deck 26? For me, it's a callback to the fact that they can't, or they never got the decks right, or the number of decks right, on the Enterprise E, specifically in First Contact. We hear that there is a number of different decks. I think they go from 24 to 26. How big is this ship? There are 24 decks. However, later in the movie, this crew member mentions deck 26. It's pretty bad, sir. It looks like the control decks 26 up to 11. So it's one of those, I don't know that it was deliberate, but if it was, okay, I give them credit for going with that subtlety in there. Well played. And I honestly can't remember which deck sickbay is on. Uh, 26? Is that, do we have that many? After the fight on the surface, there's an invasion force that is trying to take over the Cerritos. And we get another thing that's just, it's, it's lame and it's dumb. When this boardy, boarding party hits the ship, you get orders from the captain across all comm channels man your post, you need to go ahead and multitask, they can do it on the Enterprise. The more and more that they do the, they do it on the Enterprise, it just, it's overplayed, it's not funny. I think it's dumb, it is not well played. But instead of fighting back the invading force, they want, or she wants the crew to go ahead and manage their tasks and fight back the invaders, it's not realistic, again. Now, I understand, it's supposed to be satire over the top, but it just, it doesn't make logical sense. And again, it's one of those things just fell real flat. Repel all intruders, but do not use it as an excuse to stop doing what you are doing. I want to stay on track and on time. It's all multitasking, people. They do it on the Enterprise all the time. Back on the surface, and for some reason we have Mariner and we have Ransom together in a cell while the rest of the crew are being held hostage underneath a rock with crystals or something sticking out that, you know, they're gonna be smashed with. And we get, we get again, we get Mariner saying BS. And not BS, but the full word. And again, on my feed, it was bleeped out. Here you can see it. You don't have it. I'm calling bullshit on your whole thing. It's not funny, it's not edgy, it doesn't add, uh, add anything to the story. Stop, CBS, just stop. 
there is no need for it. And sadly, this may be the first instance of it in this episode, but it's not the last. If you win, we let you go. If you lose, you'll be dead. And your away team will be crushed by the adjudication, Geo. And while Mariner and Ransom are having their back and forth talking about, you know, how they got into this, each one trying to stand their own ground and defend their position, what I loved was you had Commander Ransom talking about the fact that this is our team. Mariner calls it his team and he corrects her and says, no, this is our team. And that's true. And the fact that she is one of those type of characters that it's about me, myself, and I, and she doesn't see that her actions put other people at risk. It's one of the things I found most distasteful and unlikable about her since the very beginning. With all due respect, sir, my friends aren't trapped in an alien prison. Your team is. That's not my team, it's our team. But I guess you don't think that way. Back on the ship and you see Baimler walking around, Boimler, whatever his name is, the jackass comic relief white straight dude that's on here. And you get him going through and he's got his pad and he's continuing on with this task even though there's this invasion force and he gets basically cornered at the end of a hallway. He's got you know an enemy to his left, an enemy to his right, and an enemy straight ahead. And they're threatening him with spears and he realizes, I have a phaser. Don't move, human. No! We have to surround it. Yeah, but I, I have a phaser. <gasps> These guys are lightweights. This is what the red alert's about? I love this. I thought this was great. It's one of those that, you know, he could have run and, and hid and been scared, but he's like, to hell with this. Boom, boom, boom. Knocks them all out, takes care of them, and moves back on to his task. Um, I, I thought it was really well played as far as the pacing, the realization that, hey, we can fight back. We have the tools to be able to fight back. Why other officers of higher rank didn't think of this, why security didn't think of this, I don't know. But the fact that he thought of it, I actually did like. Captain, I just phasered some Galrakians. Back on the surface again, and we're talking between Ransom and Mariner, and we get another dropping of swears from Mariner, and it's the big one, the granddaddy of them all, the F-bomb. We get a WTF out of her. Oh, what the f Oh, God! It isn't necessary. Again, it's not funny. It doesn't deliver a punchline. There's nothing here that's enjoyable about them doing this, and I, I just stop. Just stop, stop. It is stuff like this why I will not have my kids watching this show. There's no need for it. Whereas I fell in love with Star Trek TV when I was in like fourth and fifth grade. My kids won't be watching it. My oldest daughter, she's almost 18. If she wants to watch it, fine. The youngest, no, she ain't gonna be watching this. However, we come from this to something that I think was actually, again, if it was a deliberate callback, I think it's great. In the fight between Ransom and Vindor, you actually hear, if you listen very closely to the music, it sounds like the fight music between Spock and Kirk back from the original series. And yes, I am not a huge lover of the original series, but having little elements like this in there, oh, this was really, really good. Take a quick listen. Do you see what I mean? Well, hear what I mean? Hopefully you do. The last thing I think that really needed to be improved is again, in addition to Mariner dropping F-bombs, we get the doctor dropping one too. Congratulations, you look like a f***ing scratching post. Why? Why? Especially if you're gonna bleep it out, it doesn't move the story along, it's there for shock value, it is just not necessary. Please, stop doing it. There is no reason for it. Finally, my final point here in this episode is something that I liked. We're going to leave it on a high spot. And it is a nod to the most important person in the history of the Federation, Miles Edward O'Brien. Perhaps the most important person in Starfleet history, Chief Miles O'Brien. It's the complete opposite of the trope that O'Brien must suffer. And I didn't think the animation looked a whole lot like Colmini. Um, I think they could have done better on that, but just having a call out to really what a wonderful character and person O'Brien was, 
I actually really, really liked. Now, I know normally in this, I do five and five. I know I went over that, but this was one of those episodes where there were more than five things that I liked and more than five things that I thought needed to be improved. And it's what I like doing this series about is the fact that not everything is crap, not everything is great. Let's find that middle ground. I will say, even looking at it from the outside, if this were not a Star Trek show, if it was just generic sci-fi show B, I probably wouldn't enjoy it. I haven't enjoyed any of these three episodes. There have been little bits and pieces like in the last episode. Again, you can check that out right up there. I liked the B story with Rutherford. I thought he was a very likable character. I liked that quite a bit. But between the language and the dumb story plots, you know, I can laugh at the tropes and whatnot. That's fine. I have not laughed one. I didn't even break a smile during this episode, um, which is kind of sad for something that's supposed to be funny in a comedy. But these are just my opinions. Let me know what you think down below in the comment section. Uh, like I mentioned too at the beginning of this video, I want to know what is your favorite Star Trek TV show of all time? Just TV, not movies. We'll deal with movies in another episode. Now, if you do have any other comments or questions, as always, feel free to leave them down below in the comment section. You can also go ahead and send me an email at rocksolidmail at gmail.com. You can hit me up on Twitter at Rock Solid Studios. We are on Facebook at facebook.com slash rocksolidproductions and Instagram at instagram.com slash rocksolidproductions. GK. Now, if you want to go ahead and support the channel, you can do so in a couple of different ways. First and foremost, head on over to our Patreon page at patreon.com slash rocksolid. For as little as a dollar a month, $12 a year, you get early access to all of our video content, exclusive content, and a whole lot more. You also get email notifications when there's a new post. And every video that we upload goes early to our Patreon subscribers. Same thing here, you can also become a channel member here on YouTube. That starts at $1.99 a month and goes up from there depending on how much you want to support us. You also do get early access to all of our content and exclusive content that way too. You can also go ahead, head on over to our Teespring store on screen right now where we have t-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, masks, cell phone case, and brand new, we also have a new zippered hoodie as well. Pretty cool, just added that to the store the day that I am filming this here. And then finally, if you are looking to save on some awesome modern and retro gaming consoles, accessories, parts and pieces, do me a huge favor. Head on over to CastleManiaGames.com. Visit my friend Ryan's website. He has got some cool stuff up there from HD Retrovision cables to the Retro Tank to one-up cleaning cards to all sorts of different things from Hyperkin, from Retrobit, from Retro Fighters. All the best names in modern and retro gaming, Ryan has got them up on his site. And the cool thing there is he has a feature called Castle Cash, where the more you spend, the more you earn towards future purchases. And if you use promo code ROCKSOLID10, you save 10% off of most items on the website. And finally, like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, if you like what you see here and you wanna see more, do me a huge favor. Hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button and that bell notification. That way you are kept up to date when we are coming out with new content because, well, like I mentioned, they are going away or have gone away with email notifications. If you like this format, you can also go ahead and head on over to the Anti-Trekkers channel on screen right now. I did this same sort of thing with episode three through 10 of Star Trek Picard and kind of interested to see what you think about that as well. Go ahead, give him a like, comment, share, and subscribe over there as well. Man, I really wish this would get better. I mean, it's just, it's so bad. I mean, Temporal Edicts, at least it doesn't have dick and fart jokes. I'm okay with that. But for me, the series is not getting better. My name is Gary. This has been Rock Solid Productions. And our look at Season 1, Episode 3 of Star Trek Lower Decks. I thank you for watching. I'll see you next week. Take care.